Welcome back team, my name is Clint Hoagland and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In our last video, we talked about basic music theory and showed an easy way to put some simple chords into your music. In this video, we're going to talk about UGENs and specifically about how to use the ADSR UGEN to shape your sounds. First, what are UGENs? UGEN is short for Unit Generator, and it's a term that the Chuck language uses for its basic set of tools that it provides for you to build your sounds. We've been using UGENs for all of the lessons so far, but we haven't talked much about them. The oscillators are UGENs, and so is the digital audio converter. The Chuck documentation defines UGENs as Unit Generators are function generators that output signals that can be used as audio or control signals. That definition might be helpful if you're designing the language, but it's a little opaque when you're trying to learn it. I think of UGENs like this. Consider an analog modular synthesizer. The total system is comprised of many smaller modules that all have some singular purpose. You can connect all of these components together using patch cables and build up a system of arbitrary complexity that makes whatever sound you want. For those of you that haven't ever used a modular synthesizer, you don't have to have that familiarity to understand them other than to understand one basic fact. Modules in an analog synthesizer take in electrical voltages, change them in some way, and then pass that voltage on to the next module. UGENs and Chuck work much in the same way. They pass audio sample buffers from module to module, and you can wire them together so that one comes before another. Up until now, we've only ever wired our oscillators directly to the digital audio converter, which is the last stop before the sound gets to your speakers. Let's try inserting another module, or UGEN, between our oscillator and the digital audio converter and see how that works. First, let's set up what's becoming our standard starting point, a triangle oscillator chucked into the DAC. Let's set its gain to 0.2 this time. Let's define int arrays for a major chord and a minor chord. Chuck 48 into an int called offset. Create another int with nothing in it called position. And let's chuck two seconds into a duration called beat. Now let's make a for loop counting up to four with a position of zero. Inside it, we're going to chuck the frequency of the first value in the minor array plus the offset plus the position to our oscillator's frequency. Let's send half of a beat to now so that this doesn't take too long. Then we're gonna do that again, but change the position to minus four and the chord to major. Then we're gonna do that again, but change the position to minus two, leaving the chord as major. Then one last time, we're going to do it again, this time with the position as minus five, once again, leaving the chord as major. Let's play it back. Okay, as usual, uh, there are a couple problems, so let's fix those problems now. I forgot to put the type for these. Let's save it up and see if it works now, but it won't. Let's see. Oh, look. These are supposed to be F-R-E-Q, and not frequency. I typed that out. Silly me. Oh. I'm leaving this in so that you don't feel bad when you mess up, if you do, because I certainly mess up a lot. Let's try again. Okay, setting aside that this was supposed to be minus five, I'll save that right now. Uh, the first thing that probably jumped out at you is that the sound was very, very boring. Up until now, all of the sounds that we've had, the oscillators are, are at a single volume. Now, what we can do about that is we'll put in what's called an ADSR envelope. And we're going to plug this in right here in between our oscillator and our digital, oscillator, and our digital audio converter. So I'm going to call it ADSR. I'm going to call it ENV1. And I'm going to chuck that to the uh, DAC. Now, a ADSR, that stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. And this is a standard set of envelope stages that will represent the shape of a sound as it goes through time. Now... The way this is usually represented, there's a nice little graphic on the front of a Juno 2 synthesizer that I'm going to show a picture of right now. The attack represents how long it takes for the effect for the sound to fade in. The, the decay is the amount of time that it takes for it to get down to the sustain level. The sustain level is how loud it is while you're holding down the key. Like if you're imagining this to be a like an organ or a synthesizer sound. That's how long it, or how loud it is while you're holding the key down. And then the release is how long it takes to go from that sustain level down to 
nothing. So we can set that. It, the way that the ADSR envelope works inside of Chuck is that it takes a duration for that first moment. And we're going to say that that's going to be a, a beat minus uh, divided by 2. And we're going to say the decay. Let's say that's a beat divided by 2 as well. Let's say that the sustain is 0. And let's say that the release is 1 millisecond. And now we're going to set that to, we're going to chuck that to env1.set. And that's how you set the time for your ADSR envelope. Now, if we were to play our project back now, it wouldn't make any sound. Uh, and the reason why is because in order for an envelope to be triggered, quote unquote, inside a chuck, you need to send it a control voltage. And that's how it would work in a real synthesizer. So they've taken that uh, concept in two. So the way that you kick a ADSR envelope in chuck is you send a one to your envelope one dot key on. Now that's lowercase k, uppercase o. And we're gonna put that before each of our moments where we send some time to now. And I'm gonna save that up and let's see what it sounds like, if anything. Oh, so here's an important thing. I'm glad I did this so we can see it. It says variable member beat is used before its declaration. So up here, note that I said, here's a beat and I wanted it divided by two. At this moment in the program, Chuck doesn't know what a beat is because I defined it down here in line 12. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy or cut it rather. I'm going to put that above our envelope set there. Let's save it up again. Try it again. So you can see that that was quite a bit more musical than before we put the envelope in there. So what we heard there was, every time we kick the envelope by sending one to key on, we hear the sound rise for one second, which is the attack phase, and then fall for another second, which is the decay phase. Now our sustain was set to zero, so it went all the way back to silence. And just so there wouldn't be any pops or anything, I left the release phase at one millisecond. So up until now, all of our Chuck compositions have only had a single voice. Let's change that by adding a second oscillator and a second set of envelopes and see what we can do. We can find a cheap way to get what we call polyphony in our truck composition using a second envelope. We're going to call this envelope 2 and we're going to call this oscillator 2. And then we're going to check that to the DAC. Um, the beats, gonna, we're going to leave that the same. We're going to say our attack for our second oscillator is going to be one millisecond and we're going to say that it's decay is a beat divided by eight sustain again of zero and a release of one millisecond again we're going to chuck that to envelope two set we're going to make the gain for oscillator two zero point one uh, we're going to add, you're going to see why this is in a second, and we're going to add a 12 to each of these chords. Now, as we said in our last lesson, uh, notes just repeat after 12. So this note 12 is going to be the equivalent of zero. It's going to be the same note, it's just going to be up higher. And you're going to hear how it sounds here in a second. Um, but inside these for loops, uh, we're going to add a second inner for loop, much as we did last time. So we're going to say for zero to J, because we use J for our inner loops, int J, and we're going to say J is less than 4, J++, plus plus. and then we're going to say std data mtof, once again we're going to say uh, minor in this case, J plus offset plus position, and this time we're going to do plus 12 just to make it sound higher again. And we're gonna send that to ask two's frequency. And then we're going to kick envelope two key on by sending that one to it. Now we're going to 
make a beat divided by 12, or divided by 8 rather, here. And chuck that to now. And since we're going to be doing the movement inside the inner loop, we're going to remove the outer loops, beat, sending the beats now there. Now we're going to copy this whole block, and we're going to put all this like so. We're going to change this one to major. Might as well change this one to major just for fun. We don't need to, but let's do it. We're going to do the same thing here. Change this to major, and this to major. And then why don't we just copy this so we don't have to do all that again. Copy this. And let's save it up and see what this sounds like. That's starting to sound suspiciously like music there. So let's throw that inside a while loop for fun. And we could make that go indefinitely. So what happened in this, as we were listening to this thing, there are, it's the, the one chord, but our first envelope that we had, envelope one, is controlling the shape of the sound from the first oscillator. And the envelope two, which is controlling the shape of the second oscillator, has got a different envelope. And it uh, finishes much, it doesn't have the long attack phase, and it finishes much faster. And you can hear that uh, as we play through. So what happens for each of our loops is that our oscillator one that goes through envelope one, it plays on the, as part of the outer loop, and as part of the inner loop, Oscillator 2 plays through envelope 2. Let's hear it one more time. You get the idea. Okay, so what we have here is something that sounds pretty much like the background for a video game soundtrack, right? Uh, we're starting to make something that sounds like real music. In this lesson, we talked about eugens, which are the basic building blocks of sound in Chuck. We talked specifically about the ADSR eugen and how it controls the shape of your sounds. There are dozens of other eugens, and we'll discuss those in future tutorials. However, if you're like me, you're probably starting to go crazy copying and pasting all this code. In our next tutorial, we'll fix that problem by talking about functions.